to know so much about boat engines? Well, I was in the Marines. I spent some time attached to an amphibious group. Before that, I worked in a boatyard. Just picked stuff up. <laughs> so, is this where the uh, steward's going to meet me for the rest of my uh, tour of the yacht? Yeah, that's what he said. Should be here any minute. So, what do you think? Of the yacht? Yeah. <laughs> I just wish Grandfather would kick in for something like this. And this is a beautiful boat. Yeah, it is. It needs a lot of work, though. It is in shipshape order? No. Oh, can't say that about Ariel. Lady Ashton? Yeah, she's a ten if I ever saw one. <laughs> Don't you agree? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but I can't figure her out. I mean, she's not the type of person you'd expect to meet in the library. You don't meet many beauties in a public library. Well, maybe she likes to read, huh? Uh, yeah. Well, it gets curious. What are you talking about? She had the library pull out all of the newspaper files on you. She what? Well, I don't know how long she'd been there, but she's usually getting the lowdown on you. Can you figure it? No. No, I sure can't figure it. I am awfully sorry to keep you waiting, Master AJ. Uh, I... It's all right. Mr. Shaw? Sorry. Maybe something's going on, Colton. No, I don't think so. I've got to get back to work. Uh, Mr. Shaw, might I suggest you to make your return to work as brief as possible? Lady Ashton would like to see you here in 15 minutes. Please. Mom? Hmm? I've got to ask you something. First thing tomorrow morning, tell me, we've got to put you through that MRI test. Fine, I want to get it out of the way. Uh, next, to full CAT scan, then a myelogram. Who's the nuclear med tech on that? Oh, it's Stevens. Okay? Oh, good. Yeah, I like him. And uh, here's your schedule for the rest Thank of the month. Thank you. Tony, what time do you want to be admitted? Late today. Okay, that's fine, because they're open till 6. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you, no foods, no liquids. Right, after midnight, I got okay, it. Yeah, okay, okay. And uh, Tony, we'll drop by your room after you've been admitted, all Okay, right? thanks. Okay, I got to make rounds. Yeah, so do I. See you later, buddy. And Tony, don't worry about anything, because we're all going to take care of you and make sure you're okay. You better. <laughs> we will. Tony, Hi. I've been looking for you. You got a minute? Sure. Can we sit? Sure. How did the meeting with Steve go? Oh, it went okay. I'm going to check into the hospital at the end of the day, and Addison and Woodruff are going to run me through every test in the book. Well, that's good. Did he get my report and Monica's in the St. John's surgery? Yeah, and you were a little bit too generous for my taste. No, we weren't. I just hope my head wound from four years ago is not the problem here. You want some advice? From you? I'd love some. You just take it one day at a time. Okay, I'll work on it. Have you called Charlene? Uh, no, but I'm going to, actually. I need to arrange for some help with BJ in case Addison Woodruff, uh, you know, find out something and want to immediately get into this. Well, you know I'm available. Yeah, but, you know, you're busy, and uh, this might be a long-term situation. Oh, come on. BJ's a lot more important than you. You've got a job. You've got the brownstone. Well, I'm okay. Terry helps me take care of the brownstone. And besides, it might be very short notice to try and get someone right away, so... You know what I'm thinking? Come here. Second time is finding. This is Victor Jerome calling. I'm calling to inquire about the condition of my daughter, Olivia St. John. I see. All right, thank you. The same. When I first came in, I thought you were talking to your lawyer. I've called him twice. All he tells me is, I'm lucky that I was out on bail. Julie. That's what I came to tell you. He's here. My son. Oh. I leave the two of you alone. But Julian, remember he's tired after last night. I will. Thank you, Dimitra. My son. My son. Thank God you didn't show up last night for my birthday celebration. You'd be under arrest like I am. What do they say about Olivia? She's still in the coma. But I don't want to talk about her. I want to talk about you. There's so much to say, and there's so little time left. I thought perhaps you'd gone away from here for good when you didn't show up last night. Where were you? It doesn't matter. With Cheryl? No. You must have been someplace. All right, enough. I'm not going to question you about that. I want you to learn something from me. What? 
I was talking to Dimitra about this just the other day. My life. When I was a young man, hardly more than a young punk, I gave in to the family. And it's only recently have I realized I've spent my life with wrong loyalties, wrong values, and in the wrong business. It has all caught up with me. Pop, the business might have been wrong, but not your loyalties. You were willing to work with me to change the family business? That was the great stupidity of mine. There's no changing a mob. Listen, I face prison, maybe for the rest of my life. But I could find happiness knowing you had survived this life and had given it up forever. Julie, I can live on through you. I love you, Pop. And I hear what you're saying. But I just can't tell you that I can walk away from it now. I need some time. We don't have a lot of time to waste. My whole life is catching up with me. Yeah, well... Believe it or not, mine is too. <laughs> Cheryl. Yeah. You know there's someone in her life now. Robert Scorpio. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> he was the brains behind the bust last night. You still love her? I always have. I'm sorry about that. But at least she's no longer a reason for you to remain here. Well, maybe. 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 You're out of her life. I'm still not sure about that. I just told you. She's found someone else. Ah, I know. But I've got to make sure that she's clear of us. Julie, there is no us anymore. The Jeromes and the Carters, we're finished. We will not exist when this is over. Pop, I gotta go. I just came to see that you were okay. Julian, has something happened with you that I don't know about? No. Something has happened and you want to spare me? No, no. What's to spare me? Everything bad that could happen has happened. I don't want you to worry. I'm going to be fine. I really do got to go. One thing. What? Um, the estate is uh, under surveillance by the police to make sure that no small fish slipped through the net last night. I have learned a few things from you, Pop. I came in the back way. Nobody saw me. Take care. We'll make it, Pop. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jim. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you. Honey, he's not going away for good, is he? He should. Whether he does or not, I don't know. Hey, come on. Come over here by me.
General Hospital will continue in a moment. <laughs> hi. Oh, hi. Thanks. Do you like some coffee? Oh, no, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm a few minutes late. Oh, that doesn't matter. You look great. What a great outfit. Thank you. I cannot tell you what a nice surprise it was you calling me instead of me calling you all the time. Gregory, I didn't come to talk about us. Do you have any idea how much I would like to just put, put my arms around you and hold you? Gregory, I really don't think it's a good idea to talk I'm about you. I'm thinking about you about a thousand times a day. I came because Chet came to see me, and I don't want to talk about all those other things right now. Chet came to see you? He has no right to do that. Of course he has a right. He likes you and he admires you. And he told me that you're tossing this whole election right out the window. Well, nothing's more important to me than you do. That shouldn't be. Why not? Gregory, there are a lot of people who want you to win this election. They'll get behind you. They want to give you their votes. I get very concerned when I hear that you're tossing this whole thing away. I'm not a professional politician. I don't like to play that game. You play it to win, or you don't play it all. Now, you have a very important speech to make this afternoon, so make it. Talk to the voters. Show them you're the best. Let them decide. It may be over. It may be too late. It's not over until it's over. Don't slough the voters off. What do you want? You want me to give an old-fashioned, give him hell, Harry kind of speech? Yes. Okay. You got it. I'll do it. Good. At least then you've given it your best shot. Well, that's all I came to say. I have to go. Where are you going? When am I going to see you? Oh, I have to get back to work. I don't know. What? What? Of course, Gregory doesn't like this restaurant. He says you can see too much plate. Oh, <laughs> no, I think the food is absolutely delicious. I understand there's going to be a big rally for Gregory this afternoon down at the Harper. Yes, such grubby people. But I'm afraid that even if he makes a brilliant speech, it's too late. I'm sure you've also read that he's slipping in the polls. No, oh, yes, I did read about that someplace. Yeah. But he started out so strongly. Yes, what happened? Well, I don't know. He seems so preoccupied lately. Well, you remember last week when we were having supper uh, after the theater? His mind was miles away. <laughs> oh, dear. Could it be another woman? Mm. You know, I've actually thought of that. Anybody we know? <laughs> well, no, not a friend. <laughs> but maybe that singer down at um, Duke's Club. Gregory seemed unusually interested in her. <laughs> but I'm joking, of course. <laughs> I've always been absolutely certain of Gregory's fidelity. <laughs> well, I do think we should get down to the business at hand, don't you? Yes, mm -hmm. raising money. <laughs> you know something? What? Well, we've all met Lord and Lady Ashton, haven't we? Oh, yes, I met them at the Quartermain's party. In fact, Lila Quartermain insisted that I meet them. <laughs> you know, I've been meaning to call her and ask her for dinner some evening. Well, I was wondering if we could get her involved in our fundraising. She's very young, and she might attract money from the younger, wealthier group here in Port Charles. You know something, Amanda? That is an absolutely brilliant idea. Oh, why, thank you, Lucy. <laughs> and, you know, I, I would be very, very happy to go and talk to her. Oh, but my dear, you're much too busy. No, I seem to get along with her very, very well at the Quartermain's party, so I feel like I'd have an inside track. At the Quartermain party? Well, I don't see how. She turned quite pale when she got back from that stroll around the grounds like she'd seen a ghost.